Hey, good morning, peeps, and welcome back to the channel. I woke up this morning, meaning I was still alive, because if I wasn't alive, I wouldn't have woken up. You can work out the logic of what I've just said. Now, what I wanted to do is just show you a quick look at what I was talking about with our motor angles, okay? Now, we're looking at our left-hand side front motor here. If I was sitting in the rig and looking forward, this would be the left-hand side motor. You'll see that it ends up at a 45-degree angle this way. On our right-hand side motor, of course, they're both left-hand side wiper motors. This one installs at 45 degrees this way. It just means that in the SMC3 utility software and your SIM tool software, you have to make some changes. Because they're both left-hand side motors, you have to reverse the axes in the software for this to operate up and down, the same as what this one operates up and down. Anyway, we'll get into that when we uh, show some more testing in the SMC3 when we first put our motors on. Oh, I've just knocked over my bloody tripod. Let's talk about our traction loss motor hardwood bracket and how we attach it to our mid frame. It is attached to our mid frame via 35 millimeter tech screws. And there are nine of them in total. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You will follow exactly the same procedure for setting up your rear traction loss hardwood bracket as we've already been through with our front motor brackets. The main difference is that we need to cut our 20 millimeter by 140 millimeter hardwood decking at 410 millimeters in length for our rear traction loss bracket. Okay, get a nice square cut when you cut this. Then you will place this exactly 25 millimeters from the end of your mid frame inboard and you'll get it square by lining it up exactly with your mid frame. That's why it's important when you cut this at your 410 millimeter length to make sure you get a nice square cut. You'll use your decking to get it square to your mid frame. Then what you're going to do is you're going to measure in 30 millimeters. You're gonna make a mark, put your square on and draw a line. Then you're gonna measure from this line, 25 millimeters in, make a mark, put your square on and draw a line. Then you're gonna measure another 25 millimeters, make a mark, put your square on and draw a line to get three lines where our 35 millimeter tech screws are going to live. These are the measurements for your tech screws. In our very first line, furthest at the back, you'll measure in 20 millimeters, make a mark. Then you'll measure in 70 millimeters, the midway point of our 140 decking. You'll measure in 70 millimeters, make a mark. From this edge, you'll, you'll measure in again, 20 millimeters and make a mark. Our center line, you'll measure in 20 millimeters and make a mark, then you'll measure 30 millimeters and make a mark. From this edge, 20 millimeters, make a mark. From that mark, 30 millimeters to here, make a mark. On our inboard line and our last line, you'll measure in 40 millimeters and make a mark. You'll measure in 40 millimeters and make a mark. Now on all of those marks, you will drill with a six millimeter drill bit through your hardwood decking before we place this on. Then you will use your impact drive with your eight millimeter or five sixteenth socket driver and you'll drive your tech screws once you've lined this up and got it square and placed 25 millimeters in from the back of your mid frame. You'll drive all of these in with your impact drive. Okay, guys, what you're looking at here is our rear traction loss motor lever, okay, which is welded onto our rear traction loss motor. Now, this is a two-stage lever because we need to be able to remove the longer section of our lever so then we can get our motor in and out of our bracket. So you'll cut two pieces of 8 millimeter by 30 millimeter mold flat steel. So you need to get yourself one meter of this stuff, okay? Because we use this on this motor and our front motors. So you need to cut one length of this at 160 millimeters in length, and you need to cut another length at 110 millimeters in length. Our 160 millimeter length, you will find the center of, make a couple of marks, as we always do, and draw a center line along to get your center. Okay, then you're going to do the following with these hole locations. Now, these hole locations allow you to be able to tweak the geometry of your rear traction loss to be a longer arc or a shorter arc. And it's handy to have it this way. Now, I've ended up using mine basically at the back for the full traction loss. 
But sometimes that's not always the best thing. It might be nicer to have a tight attraction loss and it's gonna come down to the individual. This gives you some options. The doctor is all about options. On your 160 millimeter piece, apart from the fact that you're going to clean it up really nicely and make sure it's nice and shiny and round all your corners, all the same techniques and principles we do for all of our metal that we cut. Once you've measured that center mark, you're going to first measure in where you're going to have your attaching bolts because we bolt this to our 110 millimeter piece that is welded on to our traction loss motor. So you will measure in exactly 10 millimeters. You'll measure in 10 millimeters and punch it. You will measure in 30 millimeters and punch it. You will drill an eight millimeter hole here for an M9 bolt, and you'll drill a 13 millimeter hole here for an M12 bolt. They are 25 millimeters in length. You can't be longer than that, or they'll contact your hardwood bracket here, and they'll contact the motor mount bolts. They can only be 25 millimeters in length. That gets you through your two eight millimeters of levers. Then you will measure from the very end and we'll start our holes along here that take our M12 push rod bolts. So what you'll do, you will then measure from the very end of your 160 millimeter and on your center line, you will punch 55 millimeters. 55 millimeters on your center line, punch it. 20 millimeters, so 20 millimeters from there to here, punch it. 20 millimeters from this punch to this punch, punch it. 20 millimeters from that hole to this hole, punch it. And this one to a very end hole here, 35 millimeters. 35 millimeters for the last one. Punch it and you'll drill those all with a 13 millimeter drill bit and you'll pilot hole them first with an eight millimeter drill bit, okay? To make your life easier as we've done in all of the other videos. So obviously, once this has been punched, these two holes here, you will need to place on your 110 millimeter, uh, 30 by eight millimeter mild carbon steel. You'll need to place that on and mark those first two holes onto your 110 millimeter bracket. So then you can punch that bracket and drill those holes. I've located this top bracket. It is located 35 millimeters on to your 110 millimeters, right? So this overlaps 35 millimeters inboard onto that guy. Now, don't worry about all this business here, okay? This is, uh, you know, fairly convoluted and will not be necessary for you. You'll just have a normal piece. This is like staggered in three stages up ways because originally when I was building this bracket, it was a um, test and see. And it took me a while to work out what my finishing length was on my lever bracket for the correct geometry in the rear traction loss motor so then I could get the nice amount of traction loss that I was after. So you won't have all of this staggered business here, right? Where I've cut brackets, welded them on, yada, 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 shum na 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 na. Someone has stolen my Honda. You will just have one 110 millimeter piece that goes onto your motor shaft and you'll only stagger your 160 millimeter piece on top of that piece. Okay, children? That's what's going on there. Please don't panic about that. We will talk about what we need to do with our levers now um, that connect to our motor shafts. Okay, guys, let's talk about setting up our motor levers. You will cut two lengths of your 30 by eight at 110 millimeters in length. You will then measure your 110 millimeter length of bar that you've just cut. You'll measure a crossways and you'll find the center, which is 15 millimeters because funnily enough, 15 millimeters is half of 30. Probably not actually that funny, just factual. All right, and facts are often not funny. Fiction is a lot funnier. Okay, so once you've found that center mark, draw a line to get the center of your piece. Okay, then what you're going to do is you're going to measure in exactly 10 millimeters at each end and mark. 10 millimeters both end and mark. And like we always do, we're going to punch those marks, okay? At one end, you will drill with a 13 millimeter drill bit. That takes your push rod bolt through your tie rod. The other end needs to be drilled at 16 millimeters. This goes over our motor shaft. Let's talk about that. Now, as previously mentioned in the tools video, 
part two of the three degree of freedom motion platform build video for those who need a reference to find out what the hell tools they actually need to get this build done. I mentioned that I had a set of carbide metal hole saws, okay? Of which one of my carbide saws is 16 millimeters. Easy for me. You may not have a complete set of hole saws, but you can source hole saws individually. The main thing is that one of those holes has to be 16 millimeters. I've also mentioned that just a normal twist bit can be bought in 16 millimeters. And if you've bought your drill and it's only a 13 millimeter chuck, then you can buy a 16 millimeter twist bit that will have a 13 millimeter shank machined out of it. So that's the cheapest way to go, okay? You need to drill three 16 millimeter holes. So you are going to need a 16 millimeter drill bit. You will drill these using exactly the same technique as we've used for all of our drilling. It's a thick steel, so pilot hole at first, then your finishing holes are 13 millimeters and 16 millimeters. Then at our 16 millimeter hole end, we need to really round that off. So what I found is I just found a washer that was basically the width of my piece here, okay? And just put it right on the edge and just mark around it like this. That gives you a nice guide, right? There's our hole there where our 16 millimeter hole will be. That gives you a nice guide. This has to be really rounded off. This end can just be cleaned up and the edges can be just mildly rounded off where our tie rod bolt goes through. But at this end that comes through our traction loss bracket, we have to get that material off or it jags on the bracket when you try and put it through your hardwood timber bracket. That's why we need to round those edges off really nicely. So get a, a milk carton lid or something that's roughly the width of your piece. Put it to the end, okay? Put it to the edge and then just mark it, right? And then with your angle grinder, take all that material off, okay? We want that gone. So this is nice and round on the end. If you do that, you'll be in good stead for the installation of your motors onto your mid-frame brackets. Now, the thing to keep in mind as well is where our 16 millimeter hole goes in here, that means each side of that hole is gonna be eight millimeters. So you'll be very close to the edge here when that hole is drilled. So make sure you get that right. You don't wanna blow right through this piece, although it's quite a thick lever that we're building here and it's not great that we're only gonna have two mils at the end here. It's not a big deal because this is welded onto our motor shaft all through this location anyway, okay? And the, and the, the pressure points for this, it's not pulling this way. It just has to go in the vertical, not the horizontal. So not a big deal. But just keep that in mind. Make sure you get that 10 millimeter uh, distance for that mark off the edge here right. Our motor connectors that will go from our motor shaft, okay, to our connecting rods that go to our top frame. So we need to set this up now so we can weld. So as mentioned previously, uh, in the drill and tap for our pentometer connector. We're gonna leave our screw in there so we don't get any welding material in here. Now, what I'm using is I'm putting my engine mount bolts in. So I've got the one that's directly opposite. So if we look at our motor mounts, you can see our motor mounts, how they are here, right? Because we we'll be moving this, doesn't matter where this is when we weld it because we just put a bat, we can just put a battery on it uh, or our power supply on it and we can move this into the position we need it to be in when we come to set it up connected to our frame. But what we want to do is we want to get it at the right position here on our shaft. Now, I don't know if you can see that, but I've got it just about flush. And that's where we need to have it. Flush, not down, not up too far, flush. That will give us our clearance. Now guys, when you weld those motor levers onto our motor shafts, it is really important to get them flush as I've shown in the video, because your clearance between your motor lever, okay, and our motor mount bolts are very, very close. If you put your lever, right, if you don't get that flush with the top of your motor shaft, if you put it on too far in and weld it, you're in trouble because it's gonna hit your motor mount bolts here. It must sit flush to clear your bolts. So it's really important to pay attention with that and get that right. As I said, use these motor mount bolts when you're putting your 
lever on your motor shafts as a support. You can use them and screw them out to get your motor shaft level. So get your little spirit level on your lever when you're placing it on your shaft ready to weld, okay? Use your engine mount bolt to basically wind out and assist you to hold this in place and get this level before you start doing your tacks. And just do one tack, okay, first, then check your lever, make sure it's level. You can, with one tack, you'll be able to sort of tap it with a hammer if it's, if it's moved. Make sure it's level after the first tack, then get your next tack in directly opposite that tack. All right, and you'll just tack this around, right around. Good hot tacks, because it's a uh, 15 millimeter shaft and we've made a 16 millimeter hole, You've got lots of space to get welding for this to be nice and strong. And you'll make sure you put a bevel on the top of your motor shaft, okay? Now it's slightly beveled as it is, but just run your grinder around the top edge of your motor shaft to put a slight bevel on it. So then that also creates some more space for your tacks to really go in and hold that lever on. And then of course you'll run three tacks in the back. It's very hard to see this. You'll just do three tacks in the back uh, diagonally opposite each other. One here, one here, and one right at the back on the inside on your shaft to your motor lever. If you do that, uh, your motor levers are gonna be good for the life of your sim. Don't weld it down here or up too high, flush, and you can use one of the motor mounts to help you establish the height that you need, okay? And then you're going to carefully tack this around. Once you've got it flush, you're gonna just do some very light tacks around. We're not gonna put lots of heat into this, short bursts of good tacks, because we don't wanna heat up our motor too much and, and melt something in the motor. And then we're gonna do the same on the other side, just in three positions, across from each other and one at the back. Three tacks, one, two, three, underneath. Well, peeps, another pat on the back is deserved here. You've now completed all the build components for the mid frame. One thing left to do now is to get this painted. Now I'm gonna paint mine in a gloss black. How you paint yours is up to you. Again, I would encourage you to paint it. It's a little bit more effort, a little bit more time, but man, it's gonna look great if you do it. You'll follow exactly the same techniques and principles as shown in how to paint the base plate. So I'm not gonna go through all of that again because otherwise we're just doubling up. So you'll make sure that all of your primer and primed areas on your metal are slightly roughed with like a 1200 grade sandpaper. Then you'll go over all of your metals with methylated spirits and some cloths, okay? And you'll get all the loose particles off your mid frame before you start to paint. I would take your traction loss motor and your front motors off, obviously, before you do this. Don't have them installed, you're gonna get paint all over your motors. As mentioned, I will be painting my uh, motor brackets, the hardwood motor brackets. I'll just be painting them in a black as well. I think I'm going to paint my levers in an orange the same as the base plate, because it'll stand out really nicely from the rest of the mix. But it's really up to you, okay? I thought about maybe even just doing them in a clear and keeping them that nice shiny chrome color, even though it's only metal. But anyway, all of those things are up to you guys. It goes without saying that the doctor really appreciates all those who have subscribed. What a bunch of bloody legends. Thank you so much, guys. We are onto our top frame now in earnest. They're gonna be our next videos, guys, is our top frame, the building of our seat frame, and all of that juicy stuff is coming up next. So until I see you again, stay safe, stay healthy, and take it easy out there.